Welcome along to part four of our video series where we are creating a platform game using Scratch. We are getting close to the end now. Uh, what we're going to do in this video today is put in some portals that will take us from one level to the other. We're also going to put in some dog bones so our dog's got something to collect. And he has to collect all the dog bones before he can actually activate the portal to take him to the next level. And the final thing we're going to add in this video is some obstacles and they're going to be in the shape of some junk food. Okay, so to get started, what we might do is bring in the portals, first of all. Okay, and the way we bring in the portals is simply make a new sprite. The new sprite we're going to use for the portal is the button one. So it's a green button. And I just want you to move that into a position where you want the portal to be. I'm going to put it over here. It's a little bit large for my liking, so I'm going to use the shrink tool just to shrink it down a little bit. I don't want to go too small. Maybe about there looks good and get it into a good position. Now, first piece of code we need to bring out is the setup code. Okay, we're going to get this portal in the correct position on each of the three levels. Um, so what we're going to do is bring out in the events tab here, we're going to bring out when I receive, and we're going to choose the setup option first of all. Um, in the data tab here, we're going to bring out set level over to zero. That means the level is not over. Okay, we've still got the level to complete. Alright, so that's easy enough. The next thing we're going to do is go to the looks. So we're going to change the look of this portal. First thing we're going to do is make it slightly transparent. Okay, so where you've got set color effect to zero, just change that color effect to ghost effect and set it to 50. So that makes our portal about 50% transparent now. The other thing we need to do is just set the color effect to zero. Okay, we're going to be adjusting this color effect a little bit later on. Okay, when the portal actually gets activated by collecting all the bones, we're going to change the color of it. Okay, but when we start our game or set it up, we need the normal green color there. Okay, so that's why its color effect is set to zero. Now, the next thing we need to do is just bring out a quick if then statement that tells us where we want to position this portal in level one. Okay, so in the if then statement, you need to bring out the equals operators first. And we're going to bring out level and write equals one. So if our level equals 1, then where do we want to position it? Since this is in the right position as it is, the go to x and y values don't need any changing. Okay, That's the exact values of where it is right now in the level. Okay, So we'll just leave it as that. So at level 1, that's where it's going to start. And if I press the green flag at the top, you can see that's where it starts and it becomes slightly transparent. That's what we want. It's going to change its color once we activate it by collecting all the dog bones, which we're going to add in shortly. Next thing I'm going to do is just duplicate that code, not once, but twice. Okay, remember we've got three levels in this game, so we need to set this portal up for level two and level three. Now the X and Y values for level two and three are going to be a little bit different to this one, so just get rid of the blue code for level two and three at the moment. Now to bring up level 2 over here in our box, we've just got to cheat a little bit here and go to our game control um, option here. Where we've got set level to 1, just change it to set level to 2. So it starts on level 2. And now when you press the green flag, just stop it straight away before you die. But you can see level 2 now, and the portal is in a pretty funny looking position. So what we might do is just move that portal down here where it's a bit more appropriate. Okay, in that position now, your go to X and Y values will have changed. Just drag them out and drop them under level 2. Okay, so that's easy enough. What I'm going to do now is just go back to the game control sprite and I'm going to change the set level to 3. So it brings up level 3 on our stage when we press the green flag. Okay, so here's level 3. Where do you want the portal for this one? Well, I'm thinking somewhere over here is going to look good. Okay, so once you've dropped it into the position, just choose the go to X and Y and drop it under level 3. So you now have your portal set up for level 1, 2 and 3, which is easy enough. Okay, Just go back to that game control sprite and make sure you set the level back to 1 so that our game actually starts on the first level. There you go, that looks better. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some code to make this portal change colour once it's activated. Okay, So for this one, you're going to need to make a new variable. Actually, no, we don't. We've already got it in there. It's bones. So you want to count how many bones um, are on the screen. Once the number of bones equals zero, which means we've collected all the bones, 
then we can activate this portal. Okay, so in events, make sure you click back on your portal here. I might just give that a name while I'm here. Button one wasn't a very meaningful name, so make sure you call it portal. Okay, so back on the portal now, and in the events tab, we're going to bring out when I receive, and we're going to choose start. So this is once our game actually starts. We've got everything set up. Once it's all set up, we move on to the start code. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to wait until the number of bones is equal to zero. So in your operators, bring out the equal sign in data, bring out bones, and have it equal to zero. Okay, so when we start our game, wait until the bones equal zero. When the bones do equal zero, so I've collected them all, with the looks here, just change the set ghost effect to zero. Okay, that will make it completely visible again. So it's not going to be as transparent as it was during the gameplay. Next thing I'm going to do is change the color effect by 25. Okay, now that will repeat once and then it will stop. Okay, what we want to do is keep repeating that until our dog hits the portal. So in our control tab here, we're going to just wrap the repeat until around the change color effect. And we're going to keep repeating this change in the color effect until our dog is touching the portal. Okay, so we just, oh, it's going to be the player block actually, that little red block that's hiding underneath the dog. So once our player block touches the portal, that's when that color effect will stop. Okay, and the way we stop it is just in data here, we're just going to set level over to 1, which tells us that's it, the level's over, time to move on to the next level. Okay, so that's all the code for the portal sorted out. Remember, your X and Y values over here will probably change to what I've got. Okay, it just depends where you want to position the portal in your three levels. Just remember that. Okay, so that's portal done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a bone for the dog to collect. And unfortunately, there's no sprites already made up that look like bones, so we're going to have to paint a new sprite ourselves. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here around the center point. Now, the way to draw a bone is actually quite easy. We're just going to grab our ellipse tool, and we're going to leave the outline on and select black as our color. Now, holding shift, I'm just going to draw a circle. And then control C and control V to copy and paste it. And I'm going to set it up like that. All right. Then I'm going to press control C and control V again. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put in another circle. And then I'm going to copy and paste that as well by pressing control C and control V. These are the f different ends on our bone. What we need to do now is just grab our line tool and connect these up by simply holding shift and drawing a line between the circles. Okay, so we're going to have something looking like that so far. I'm just going to zoom in one more so you can see this. Next step is to grab your fill bucket and choose the color white. Okay, and just start coloring those sections in until they're all colored in. Finally, we're just going to grab our brush tool. Okay, and you can adjust the size of the brush down here. Just make it a little bit bigger. And what you're going to do is just paint over some of these black lines around the ends of the bone until you get something that resembles a bone. Okay, it can be a little bit fiddly, so make sure you take your time. Just rub away the ends of the bones. Like so. And there we have it. We've got a bone. You can see it's a pretty big one over here at the moment, so you're just going to need to grab your select tool here and just highlight it. I'm just going to hold shift and bring that down a bit so it's a reasonable size. You want to get that back in the center of the page. So how's that looking now? That's a pretty good size bone there now, so I'm happy with that. Mine's about 66 by 18 pixels. There's something around there. It's fine. Uh, the other thing you need to do just before you click on OK, make sure you center it. So check your center point and make sure it's smack bang in the center of that bone. So somewhere around there would, would be good. And that's got our bone uh, all drawn up and added to our first level. Okay, what we need to do now is get the bone into the start position. Okay, so I'm going to move my bone just up to here. This is where I want my first bone to be. Now let's add some code to this bone. Before I do, I might just hit the information symbol and give it a name. I'm going to call it bone 1. We're going to add some more bones in in a moment, but just for but now, bone 1 is all we need. First thing I want to do is, in our events tab, bring out when I receive setup. We've got to set our bone up in the right position first of all. 
In data, we're going to change the bones by one. So every time a bone appears on our screen, we're going to set that variable bones to one. Okay. In this first level, we're actually going to have three bones in here, so that variable bones will be set to three. And the only way that variable can go down is us by us collecting the bones. Okay. And when it hits zero, that's when this gets activated. But anyway, back to the bones. When I receive setup, so we've got to set up our game, we set the bones, we'll change the bones by one, and then we're simply going to work out which level we're on, and then position it accordingly. Okay, so it's very similar to what we did just a moment ago. So if level equals 1, so that means if we're on level 1 in the motion tab, bring out your go-to X and Y. Okay, and because that bone's already in the right position, the X and Y values will be bang on. Duplicate that code for me two times and change where it says level to 2, and then down the bottom one, level to 3. And just remove the blue code from those. Okay, remember the X and Y values will change from level to level. So remember to cheat to get to level 2 and 3. We need to go back to the game control sprite where it says set level to 1, change it to 2. And when you run your game, okay, here's level 2. Let's position this bone where we want it. So I might put the first bone over here on the left. Okay, now in my motion tab, I'm just going to pick up the X and Y value and drop it under level 2. So if we're on level 2, then go to X and Y, and that's that position right there. Now I'm going to go back to the game control sprite one more time and change where it says set level to 3. Press the green flag and it will take you to level 3. Put your bone wherever you want it to start. Okay, so I might put my first bone just over here. Alright, so that's looking good. I'm going to go to my go to X and Y value now and drop it under level 3. And that's got that bone in its starting position. Alright, the last thing we want to do, just in looks here, is choose show. Okay, the reason we put show there is because each time we collect the bone, we're going to hide them. Okay, so when we go to the next level, we want to actually show these bones to make sure they're appearing on the next level. All right, so that's all good. The next thing we want to do is we want to be able to collect these bones. Okay, so what we need to do when we start our game, so in the events, when I receive start, we want to be able to collect them. So the bones are going to wait on our screen until they sense us touching them. Okay, so wait until we're touching the player block. Okay, so that means when the bone and the player block are touching each other or having a collision, then we go over to looks and we hide the bone. Okay, so the bone will disappear off the page. Then we're going to also change the number of bones on the screen. So change bones by minus one. So it takes one off however many bones there were on the screen. And we want to have the dog bark as well, just to show that he's done something right. Okay, so in sound here, bring out play sound pop. And we're going to change that pop by going up to the sounds tab and just deleting it. We're going to hit the little speaker here. If you choose animal, we're looking for the one called dog one. Okay, I'll just give it a bit of volume here. Each time I click on it, you can hear a bark. Okay, so bring that in by double clicking on it and go back to your scripts and where it says play sound pop, change it to dog one. Alrighty, so now we should be able to collect bones. So before I test my game, I'm just going to go back to game control. Um, here and just where it says set level to 3, change it back to 1. So we start our game at level 1. And I'm going to run the game. Let's see if we can collect this bone. Perfect. You can see when all the bones are collected, our portal lights up. And that means it's activated. So we can run down and jump on that. And it takes us to the next level. Okay. I haven't got my dog in a good starting position for level 2, so I'm unable to get that bone. So I might as well just die. You can see that I couldn't actually hit that portal then. Okay, it's not activated just yet. I needed to collect all the bones to activate that portal. So I'll just stop that for the moment and get us back on at level one. Okay, once we've got those bones working, we're going to add in two more lots of bones. Okay, so down here in your sprites, just right click on bone one and duplicate it and you'll get bone two. Okay, so what we're going to do with bone two now. Which one's bone two? It must be the one on top here. 
we're going to move it into a good starting position. So I might put bone two, I'll put bone through down there, put bone two about here. Okay. So all we need to change here is the X and Y values. Okay, so I'm going to delete those three X and Y values. And I'm going to go to the motion tab here. And for bone two, just bring out the go to X and Y and just drop it there under level one. Okay, that's easy enough. Uh, I'm just going back to my game control spot, sprite. I'll just set the level to two. Run my game and you'll see level two appear. Okay, back on bone number two. I'm actually clicked on bone two here. Just move it into whatever position you want. So I might put that one there and bring out the go to X and Y. That goes underneath level two. Okay, back on game control sprite again. We're just going to set the level to three. Run the game and you see level three appear and you can move this bone to wherever you want it. Uh, I might put this one, I might just sit him up here. Actually, I might make him fall onto it down about here. So he has to jump down and collect that bone. So it'll be a good one. Uh, so that's level three looking good. So I'll just go back to game control and set the level back to one now. So when we start our game, we're at level one. And I'm just going to duplicate bone number two and we'll get bone three in now. Okay, so just move your third bone around to wherever you want to put that. We're just going to have three bones in each level. Okay, so here we go. So I just need to delete those. Okay, so bone three, just... Where is it? Go to X and Y. Just drag that under level 1. Go back to your game control sprite. Set the level to 2. Run your game. Here's level 2 and here's our third bone. Let's just put it over here. Okay, so grab your go to X and Y now and drop it under level 2. And finally, just on level 3, so we need to go back to the game control sprite. Set our level to 3. Run the game. And just put your bone wherever it needs to go. Looks like bone two stuffed up a bit there. We might need to fix that in a moment. Oh uh, yeah, let's see what's happening down here. We've stuffed it up a little bit. So bone two and three haven't got coordinates for level three here. Okay, so bone two, this one over here. We want to put that one over there. That needed to go down there. Okay, now bone three, which is this one, I might put over here. And the go to X and Y goes underneath there. Okay, that was a little bit confusing, but I think now we've got our bones in pretty good spots. Alright, so back on the game control sprite, just set your level back to one. And we're laughing. Okay, so that's all our bones positioned nicely. The next thing we're going to add in is some junk food or some obstacles that the dog has to avoid. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a donut to the game first. And we're going to have this donut moving. It's like a patrol on a certain area. So it's going to be moving backwards and forwards. And our dog has to actually jump over it or navigate its way around it so it doesn't get hit by it. So let's make a new sprite up and look for the donut. Okay, there it is there. You'll see the donut come in. It's already got a good name, donut, so we'll just leave it as that. Now we need to bring in the setup code first of all to get this donut into the right position. So under events, we're going to bring out when I receive setup. And we're going to have this donut moving left and right. Okay, so the first thing you want to do in motion is set the rotation style left to right. If you don't do that, the um, donut will turn upside down when he does a turn back the other way. So it'll go right this way and then it will flip itself upside down and go back to the left. We don't want that. So make sure your rotation style is left to right. Now he's a bit big this donut, you can shrink him with the shrink tool or you can go to your looks which is what I'm going to do and I'm just going to say set size to 50% so half the size it is now. From here we just need to work out which level it's on and then position it. So I'm going to cheat a little bit here, I'm just going to go over to bone 3 and duplicate this, but this batch of code and just go and drop it on my donut. Okay, I'm going to snap this underneath. Get rid of the show tag, get rid of those blue tags, 
So we're going to put in different ones. But you want to have this set up here. If level equals 1, 2, or 3, where do we want to position this donut? Okay. So basically, I want this donut positioned over here. And I want him going backwards and forwards here. So it's quite hard to actually drop down to the next level. All right, so that position there is looking good. So in my motion tab, I'm just going to bring out go to X and Y and drop it straight in. It's pretty easy. Um, then we're going to go across to game number, oh, sorry, level number two. So back to your game control sprite, change the level to two. Run your game. Here's our donut. Where do you want to put it this time? I might put it over here. Okay, and he's just going to move along this area. All right, so once we've got him in position, just choose to go to X and Y and drop it under level two. Now in the game control sprite again, we're just going to set the level to three. So when we run our game, we're on level three. This time for the donut, I'm going to put him over here. About there, I reckon. So pick up your go to X and Y and drop it under level three. So we've now got our donut into his starting position. To make the donut move, we're going to need to add some more code. Okay, we've got him set up in his start positions, but now we need to bring in the start command. So when I receive start, what do I want to do with this donut? Well, we want him moving, so we're forever going to have him moving. So let's bring out a forever loop. Okay, and we're going to choose the motion, and we're going to have him point in the direction to the right, first of all. So remember, 90 degrees is pointing to the right. And what we're going to do is move him three steps. Okay, so at the moment it says move 10 steps, just change that to 3. Now if you move him 3 steps, he'll move a very tiny bit and stop. Okay, so we want to loop this code over and over again for a certain amount of time. So in the control tab here, just choose repeats. Uh, where's repeat? There is the second one. And wrap it around that move 3 steps. We want to repeat it about 35 times. Okay. And once it does that, it should move to the right. Then we want it to move back to the left. Okay, so once it's finished doing its move for a couple of seconds, I'm just going to point it back in the other direction. So I'm going to duplicate this code, actually. I'm going to make it point left, so minus 90 degrees. And then we're going to repeat 35 times, moving three steps to the left now. So that should make our donut move left and right. Okay, you can see this over here, that's working pretty well. I actually think that donut here on level 3 needs a different starting position. I might just move it a bit further out, otherwise it's going to be impossible to complete that level. You don't have to do that, but I just wanted to get that right because I'm a little bit fussy. Yeah, that looks a bit better. So our donut's on patrol, moving backwards and forwards, and he's going to be like that in every level. Alrighty, what you need to do now just to finish off the donut is make a collision between our player and the donut. So when we actually run into the donut, that's game over. So in the events tab here, we're just going to bring out one more when I receive start. So I'm going to have two of these, which is fine. And we're going to wait until there's a collision between our player and the donut. Okay, so we've got to wait till the donut is touching. Over here, so you can see this. We wait until touching the player block. When we do have a collision between the dog and the donut, we just want to broadcast that it's the end of our game. So, choose broadcast, game over. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. That's our donut done. We're going to bring in a couple of other uh, bits and pieces that we have to avoid, some other obstacles. Okay, they're not going to be moving like the donut though, so they're going to be a little bit more simple. I'm just going to go to the game control sprite and go back to level 1. I want to start on level 1 here. And I want to bring in some more junk food. So I'm going to make a new sprite. And if I just click on things, it's probably easy to find. We're looking for cheesy puffs. Okay, so double click on your cheesy puffs. Okay, they do come out quite large. So instead of telling it to shrink a certain size, I'll just use the shrink tool. Just get them down to a reasonable size. And I'm going to put them right here at the start. So our dog actually has to jump over the cheesy puffs. I don't know why that's not shrinking. There we go. Our dog has to jump over the cheesy puffs to get to his first bone. Okay, so that's a good starting position there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring out when I receive 
I'm going to choose Setup. Hey, remember this is on the Cheesy Puffs sprite now. So when I receive Setup, the first thing we want to do in looks is hide it. Okay, we only want the Cheesy Puffs to appear on level 1, but we want them to be hidden for level 2 and 3. Okay, so that's why I've got the hide tag there. So it hides to begin with. Next thing I'm going to do is just go back to control here. We just need to work out which level we're on. So if we are on level 1, hopefully you know how to do this by now. We've been doing it quite a bit. So if the level equals 1, then we're going to show our cheesy puffs. And we're going to say go to that current position, which is those coordinates right there. That's easy enough. I'm going to duplicate that code once. And we're going to remove what's inside of those brackets. If the level equals 2, then we're going to hide it. We'll duplicate that and do the same for level 3. Okay, we don't want the cheesy puffs on level 2 and 3, just on level 1. Okay, so they're going to be hidden for level 2 and 3. The other thing we need to do really quickly is put in a collision event. Okay, so in your events here, bring out when I receive start. And we just wait until we are touching the player block. If we're touching the player block, then we broadcast that it's game over. That means the player has had a collision with the cheesy puffs. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. That's looking good. Okay, the next sprite we're going to bring in is a cake. Okay, and again, you don't have to draw this one yourself, so just press the little troll's head and you'll see a cake with some candles on it. That's going to be our next sprite. Okay, now I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to copy the code from my Cheesy Puffs and just drag it and drop it onto my cake sprite. It doesn't look like it does much, but it actually does copy the code over. So what we need is when I receive setup, okay, the cake's a bit too big. So first of all, in looks, you can shrink it if you just want to use the shrink tool, but I'm just going to do it the other way just to show you. I'm going to set the size to about 40% of its original size. So if I run that code, you can see that it does come down to a nice small size. And next thing I'm going to do is hide it. Okay, we only want this cake to appear on level 2 this time. Okay, so we just need to adjust this code down in here. So on level 2, we don't want to hide it. It's actually level 1 where we want to hide it now. And in level 2, we're going to show it. Now the go to x and y values are going to be a bit different to what we've got here. Okay, so if I run my game, you'll see that we can't see the cake on level 1. In my game control tab here, I'm just going to set this to level 2 and run my game so we appear on level 2 and there's our cake appearing. But we need to put in a position where we want it. And I think about there is a good position. Okay, so in my motion, I'll just bring out my X and Y values for level 2. Okay, so when we start our game, the cake will not appear on level 1, it's going to be hidden. On level 2, we're going to start to show it, and it's going to go to those X and Y coordinates, which is right there. And if we get to level 3, then we hide the cake again. Okay, We're going to leave this code the same. So when our game starts, it's always listening out for when we actually have a collision between the player block and the cake. And if we do, then it's game over. Okay, so that's working well. That's an easy one. The last... A uh, bit of junk food we're going to bring in is a taco. So we're just going to make one more sprite using the troll's head. And if you click on things, you'll probably see down a bit lower a taco. All right, so in comes the taco into our game. Again, we're going to copy the code from either the cake or the cheesy puffs. It doesn't matter which one because it's basically the same code. Remember the starting here, if we actually have a collision or we're touching the player block, and it's game over. We don't need to touch that code. It's just this section here that we need to change. Okay, we're not going to change the size, so get rid of set size to 40%. Just remove that and snap this back up. So when we receive setup, we're hiding the taco. We don't want it to appear on all three levels, so it's hidden to begin with. If we're on level one, then it should be hidden. If we're on level two, we want to hide it as well. Okay, so I'm just going to switch that code around. So if we're on level two, then we hide the taco. Finally, if we get to level 3, then we're going to show it. Okay, and the X and Y values need to be gone. Okay, we're going to change those. So if we run our game now, level 2, you can see that there's no taco. Okay. So in my game control sprite, I'm just going to set the level here to 3. And what I'm going to do is just run the game so it brings up level 3. 
There's our taco. So where do we want this taco? I might put it down here. So the dog actually has to jump off, get the bone, and then move across in the air before they hit this taco. Okay, so that position there is where I want it. So in my motion tab, just pick up the X and Y values and put it beneath show. Now we run our game. We've got our taco in. Okay, if we hit it, we die. Okay, just like any other bad guys like the cake or the cheesy puffs, we're going to die. Alrighty, so that's basically it for this video. And I'll spend a long one. I'm glad you stuck with me. But let's just test this one last time. In game control, just set your level back to 1. So we start our game on level 1. Let's give this a good run. Okay, so make it big. Let's play our game. So we've got to get past those cheesy puffs first of all. Collect the bone. We've got to get past this donut. And just jump around and collect all those bones. Okay, once the bones are gone, we've got this portal that's opened up. And we can jump into it. Okay, that start position here on level 2 isn't any good for our dog. Okay, we can't get back up and collect that bone. So that's an issue we need to fix. Hopefully yours isn't an issue there, but we need to get this dog positioned somewhere up the top here when he starts. Okay, so somewhere up about there, which is, you can see your X and Y values here. So wherever your mouse cursor goes, it'll tell you the X and Y values. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do uh, on the player block here, we're going to need to find where we set up our starting position for level 2. Here it is over here. Okay, so when I receive setup, so when you're setting up your game, level 2, we want to get this block somewhere up about here. So that's about 145 for the X value and 150 for the Y value. So 145 and 50 will probably be a better start position. If we just double click on that, you can see where it's going to go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's just run our game again. We'll see if we can get this right. Don't know if the dog touched the donut then or not, but I hope he didn't. Anyway, that's a better start position. Now we've got to get over there and collect that bone. As you can see, we can't reach that platform, so that's another issue we need to fix up. So very quickly, I could go into my platforms here, into the costumes, and just extend this out a little bit. Let's zoom out a little bit here. If I grab my select tool and just stretch that out, that will stretch that out. Hopefully that will fix our problem. So I know you're probably getting sick of me making mistakes here, but hopefully that's the last one. So level one we're all good with. We know that works. If you go and collect, there we go. That platform doesn't look too good with that little gap between it there, but we can fix that another time. I won't hold you up in the video. Okay, so level two is working. Can we... Ooh. Now we can't get to our portal. So we're going to need to move our portal across a little bit more. Okay, so I might just stop that code, move the portal over to here, just make it a little bit easier to get to. Okay, this is my last attempt. I promise I'll stop the video. Oh, jeez. I might have lied. Bear with me while I just rip through this level. At least we know that we can get hit by the donut and we die. Okay, level two. We can go across and get that bone. We can get that bone. We can get that bone. Let's see if we can get to this portal. Ooh, that's a little bit of a glitch, but I'll fix that in a sec. I sort of died as soon as I hit the portal. Now, our level three position, he doesn't start in the right spot either. Okay, we want this dog to start up the top here. So I'll fix that, and that will be the end of the video. Okay, so, whoops, I'll just stop the code. Our dog needs to be starting up here, as does our little red block. So that's roughly position 80 by 130. Okay, so it needs to be 80 by 130. Okay, so if I just double click that code, you can see that he starts there. So that's all good. Um... On my game control sprite, I might just start at level 2 so you don't have to watch us play level 1 for a moment. And we need to move this over here. Oops, I moved it over there before, but it didn't stay. That's because I forgot to change the X and Y values for level 2. OK, 
Okay, so I'll just switch those over. All right, so we'll play level two now quickly. Jump down and get that bone, get that bone. Activated that. Now that's looking better. Okay, so we die and we hit that. We just need to make sure that these two platforms are a little bit closer together. Okay, they're a little bit too high at the moment. The dog can't jump back up and get to that top platform. So again, we're going to go to platforms, costume here. And what we need to do is just either move this up or move the other one down. I'm just going to move it. Actually, we won't do that because we've got a bone on that. We need to move that back down here. It's this one up here that we're going to need to adjust. Just bring it. It's getting a bit annoying now. We just need to bring this down. Okay, so we'll try that for a start now. Back on scripts. I'm just going to start on level 3 because I know level 2 is working now. So that looks a bit better. We jump over here, get the bone, jump back up, get that bone, get that bone. And we might not be able to hit that portal very easily. Okay, so we might need to move that portal over a little bit. Uh, this is for level 3, so we'll just switch the go to x and y values there. Hopefully we don't hit that donut this time. It might be a little bit of an issue, but we'll just have a look. Oh, jeez. Extending this video by about 10 extra minutes because I keep dying. Oh, almost there. I think we just need to make this platform a little bit higher. Okay. Actually, I might just... Oh, yeah, I'll make this platform a little bit higher. That way it'll give us a bit more room to jump into it. So... Got the selection tool, highlight it, just move it up a little bit. Back in scripts, we're going to have to move this taco now as well. So the taco's going to have to come up, and we're going to have to switch the X and Y position with the new one. Um, so we'll be able to jump across, jump down. Okay, we should be good now. Fingers crossed. There we go, and that's the end of our game at the moment. You can see we hit the portal and it stopped changing colours. In the final video, I promise to make it a short one, we're just going to bring up a message once we finish our game to say that we have completed it and won. Alright, but I am going to finally stop the video here. It was a little bit confusing there at the end, just moving around those different um, levels. You'll probably have to do it to yours as well, but make sure you get everything bang on so the player doesn't die accidentally. Okay. I'll see you in the final video to wrap things up.